Come along now as I take you through the College Football Hall of Fame. South Bend, Indiana is the home of the College Football Hall of Fame, and it is really special. It is complete with a replica football field. Of course, it's not very big. At about the 37-yard line, you find yourself indoors. And when you come inside to the Hall of Fame, the first thing you see when you look up is the top 25. And right there is the new number one team, the Florida Gators, and just down the row from Florida, number four, Ohio State, and behind Ohio State at number five is Notre Dame. The centerpiece of the Hall of Fame is this 43-foot structure. It's called Pursuit of a Dream. The whole concept is a young boy going from early football all the way up through Pop Warner to high school, and then finally, the pursuit of his dream when he becomes a college football player. As you walk down the spiral ramp 100 yards, you get a feel for what it takes to go from peewee to college football. If pursuit of the dream is the centerpiece of the Hall of Fame, this is without question the highlight. It is called Stadium Theater, and inside you will see what happens on game day from start to finish. Let's go take a look. When you come inside, you're surrounded by 11 screens. You feel like you're in a football stadium, complete with players and a bench. When you sit down, get ready to experience college football. From Stadium Theater, you make your way here to Pigskin Pageantry, where there's even more atmosphere of college football. The band, the fans, the tailgating. You can even pick your favorite college fight song. The selection right now, Notre Dame Victory March, but we've got a better one in mind. Let's flip it here to the Buckeye Battle Cry. There are currently 740 members in College Football's Hall of Fame. You'll find a commemorative plaque to each inductee all throughout the hall. There are also commemorative displays. This is my favorite here. It's a jacket and cap worn by Coach Woody Hayes. And a favorite for all the young, aspiring sportscasters is this booth. You call the play. You come inside, pick one of four fantastic finishes from college football, and you become the play-by-play -play man. Now, if you're a kid or just a kid at heart, this will be your favorite place, the College Football Hall of Fame. It's the interactive area. You get to test your skills in one of three different areas. Passing the football, running the football, or kicking the football. Boy, does he have a leg. It's long enough. It is good. Cool. Hello. And we had a very good time uh, taping that story. As expected, there have been large crowds visiting the College Football Hall of Fame. Let me tell you, it is definitely worth the five-hour trip to South Bend. There is a great deal to see here. We're not quite done yet. Mike Gleason joins us in just a bit. He sat down with the coach of the Buckeyes, John Cooper, and we'll have that when Buckeyes 96 returns. This is Cloudwatch with team coverage of the Cloud Head. All week long, players from both sides have been saying this is why you come to an Ohio State or to a Notre Dame to play in football games just like this one. Well, the same goes for the coaches. John Cooper is just as fired up for this game as any of the players. But just how much came up in a discussion with our Mike Gleason? Uh, John, you've said this week that uh, Notre Dame's probably one of, if not the best team that you've played here since coming to Ohio State. Do you really feel that way? Or is that your smoke screen, much like uh, the one Lou Holtz throws up every year? Mike, I think that, I think it's a very solid football team we're playing now. It, it, are they, will they be better than the great Penn State teams or Notre Dame teams or even the Notre Dame team we played here last year? The Michigan teams we played, uh, that remains to be seen. But based on the way they have played when they've been backed into the corner, when they've been behind against both against Vanderbilt and, of course, last week against Texas, it looks like on paper this is a very solid Notre Dame football team. Well, obviously, you feel this is a better football team this year than they were in 95. I think they're better defensively. I think they're probably probably about as good, uh, you know, offense as they were a year ago. A lot, of, a lot of the players are back, so obviously you think they might be even a little better offensive than they were, but uh, the, the big improvement over the team that I've seen this year at Notre Dame, the team that we beat last year, is defense. I don't think we're going to be able to push them around, run up and down the field, make the big plays on offense like we did against them last year. I don't want to state the obvious. Obviously, football games are uh, one in the trenches. But I think if you stop the run, you can win this football game. But you have to stop that Notre Dame run. I think we've got to shut down their running game. And I think we've got to protect our quarterback. 
to me, those are two of the big keys in the ball game. We have got the, I think we're, we're going to have to throw the football. Their front seven, Mike, is very good, very physical. Their linebackers are very athletic. Uh, if they have a weakness, I'm not saying they do, but I think, I think the strength of their defensive football team appears to be up front which means we have got to protect our quarterback and have time to throw the football. You look at their offensive line, four of the five guys are over 300 pounds, which is impressive, but probably a bigger concern is the fact that they have a lot of experience. Well, everybody you play has got size. You know, everybody we play in the Big Ten, everybody, all the non-conference teams, they've got big tackles, big guards, big center. Uh, the difference, I think, is experience, plus uh, the difference at Notre Dame is those guys are not only big, they're athletic. Notre Dame recruits the best high school football players in the country, from Los Angeles to New York and, you know, from uh, Michigan to to uh, Florida. They, uh, they go all over the country and they have a chance to get the best athlete anywhere. You're averaging 71 points a game. It's easy to take Stan out of the game and put Joe in. But now it's four against five. It's a nip and tuck battle. Have you decided when you're going to switch quarterbacks this weekend? I think it's safe to say that both quarterbacks will play. Now, whether we have the same rotation we have in the first two ball games, you know, we need to work that out. Uh, a lot of it also may depend on what's happening in the game. If we have to throw the ball more, we may go with a certain quarterback. If uh, uh, you know, it's raining, uh, the conditions are bad. We may have to, you know, take that all into consideration, make some game day decisions. So it doesn't necessarily mean that whoever comes out on top of this football game will be the guy against Penn State in the rest of the year? Well, not necessarily. Uh, you know, we're going to need every healthy body we have on this football team, including the two quarterbacks. And I think that's a great thing about our football team. I think the chemistry, the makeup of, of our football team is excellent. Uh, I think our players realize that uh, both quarterbacks have strengths. Both of them have weaknesses. Uh, both of them have done a good job so far. We're going to need them both, uh, not only for Notre Dame, but for the other tough teams we play on down the road. All right, the final word from the head coach of the Buckeyes, John Cooper. We'll be back with our final thoughts from the College Football Hall of Fame in South Bend, Indiana, when Buckeyes 96 wraps up after this. Tonight's OSU football special is brought to you by Nationwide Insurance. The interesting thing about this football game, in my opinion, is the way Ohio State will use the quarterbacks, Kirk Herbstreit, you know a thing or two about quarterbacks and quarterback controversies. Talk a little bit about what, what we're going to see tomorrow out of the Ohio State quarterback. Well, I, I talked to head coach John Cooper earlier in the week. He talked to me a lot about how they're, they're planning to try and get Joe Germain in the ball game, but with Notre Dame's passing, and the, the passing attack, the way they can get after quarterbacks, look for Stanley Jackson, and with this weather, chances are Stanley will be your guy for the entire ball game, unless he gets spooked by the big crowd. Yeah, now you talk about getting spooked. He has not played in a game of this magnitude as a starter. Is that going to rattle him? I, I think that's more hype than anything. And I know Stanley pretty well. I, I think he is a guy that has been waiting for this opportunity his entire life. So this is something that I see him excelling, not being nervous and responding, thinking, oh my gosh, here we yeah. are, touchdown Jesus, and being intimidated. I think he'll come in and play well. All right, Kirk, thank you very much. You're going with the Bucks. I like Ohio State, 27 to 24. We are going back tomorrow. tomorrow. Oh, yeah, I think it's 27-24. Tomorrow we're live 11.30 a.m. from the field for 10 TV tailgate. Right now we throw it back to the 10 TV studios. Jerry Revish and Tip of the Spear. Thanks for joining us. Good night.